Hello everyone, welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. Today I'll be reading a short one-shot entitled 197 IQ. This fic is centered around Midoriya, as the class discovers his overall genius abilities and his high IQ. Few people know, but Shota Aizawa, or the pro hero Eraserhead, uses his tired face to listen to the conversations instead of actually sleeping in class. At the beginning of the year, during free period, watched by Shota, the conversations were at low volume and not really informative. They were still stressed by his expulsion threats and were still very serious. However, as the year was nearly ending, it was the Christmas holiday approaching and the talking was more and more interesting. He actually listens when Ashido complains about her exam with Kaminari against Nezu. It was really unfair. Why put the two idiots together against the evil genius? And how much is his IQ, huh? It's said he's the most intelligent being on earth. 252, and he's the second most intelligent on Earth, actually. Surprisingly, it's Midoriya who answers. It takes all of Shota's training not to react. Did he hear this right? What? Ashito exclaims with a strong volume, stopping all other conversations in the class. What did you say? Kaminari asks, surprised. Nezu, his IQ is 252, and someone has 257 in the U.S., so he's second, Midoriya insists, unsure if he should repeat himself. Shota opens his eyes to stare at him dumbfounded. The kid is more focused on his friend so he doesn't see him. How the hell does he know this? Even him, after working under Nezu, doesn't know his IQ. He just knows that the rat is smart. That's all. He never asks, and the mammal is just too hard to read. Shoutings are coming from the students. It's too loud and not understandable. He cringes. Thankfully, Ida shouts louder than everyone to bring order to the class. Please, everyone, don't yell. Ask questions to our classmate in order. The sound calms. Shota thinks he has to intervene before it gets out of hand again. "'How the hell do you know that?' he asks, sharper than he intended. The teen flinches, but talks. "'I saw him once in the hallway, talking to All Might, and I analyzed his social cues and his thought process. It was a hard thing to do, because he's not human, and all of his hiding of his muscle twitches.' Shota sighs and pinches the bridge of his nose. That doesn't answer anything.' "'Are you gifted, too, Midoriya?' Yagyorozu asks mindfully. "'And, oh, that makes sense. If he's a genius, too, he could have read the rat. But why was he not aware of that? If he's gifted, then he should be bored in class.' Uh, "'Oh, I don't, um, I'm only the ninth, actually,' he says, unsure. "'The ninth, Deku-kun? Uraraka asks with big eyes. Midoriya looks at her, thinking, probably if he should say whatever secret he holds. "'I have an IQ of 197.' The problem child finally admits in a whisper like he's ashamed. And what the fuck? Why is he not aware of that? Why? And the reaction of the class is proof. They didn't know either. Even Bakugo explodes his desk with big angry eyes. And he's a childhood friend with Midoriya. So we have a mini Nezu in class and didn't know? Kirishima speaks up. What? No, no, no. I'm nothing like Nezu. He's really super smart with computers and I'm not good at coding. Not every genius has the same specialty. For example, Nezu is a hacker and programmer. Hatsumi Mei is a mechanic specialist, while I'm really good at reading people. Like when they lie, or when they go to attack, or when they bluff. I'm good at analyzing, too, their personalities and their quirks. Actually, if I didn't go to UA, I would have been an analyst or a psychologist, he mumbles. Again, that makes sense. Shota has realized Midoriya has low social cues. He mumbles a lot, spends a lot of time watching people. He's not comfortable with large groups, but if he's a behavior genius, then it explains why he didn't see it before. The kid is just too good at analyzing behavior and somehow ended up with reactions that people shrug off as oddities. He copies the reactions he saw so well to be in his mold. That's scary. Wait, Hatsumi May in the support course, Ida asks. And well, the teacher had listened to Power Loader's rantings. She's the support course problem child. Oh my God. Are problem children geniuses? Is that the characteristic required to be labeled a problem child? Well, yes. She's really good with inventions and has lots of ideas. If her class or power loader doesn't do anything, she'll spend days in the workshop, forgetting to eat and sleep. She calls her inventions babies and doesn't know how to read people. She has the lowest EQ I've ever seen. If that's not a genius, I don't know what she is. Yaya Rosu is taken aback like she looks as if her whole life is a lie. And you know her IQ? Sarah asks, interested. 179, probably. For a record, Einstein had a 160, and he invented the nuclear bomb. Maybe that's why she blows stuff up every day. She likes Einstein? 
He has a thoughtful face suddenly. Do you know what I think? Medetta asks. Um, no. I'm not a mind reader. I just analyze people. But I do have photographic memory. Oh, that's so useful. I have a good memory, too. How long do you take to memorize something? Yaya Rosu tells him maybe to forget her shaken realization. A glance, really. That's why I remember so much about heroes and their fights. Because I read it only once in the news and I won't forget it. Why didn't you say something? Shota asks because he should be aware of these kinds of things. He sees a shadow in the eyes of his student for an instant just before Midoriya looks down at the ground. There has to be a story here. A bad experience, maybe. Someone who told him he's weird. Of course, it could never be so simple with the problem child. He notes that Bakugo is looking regretful and avoids the genius's eyes. Bro, why are you not the first in the class? No offense, Yagorozu, but if Midoriya has an IQ of 197, shouldn't he be first? People don't like it, Midoriya murmurs, sadness and pain in his eyes. He shakes his head as if the bad memories would go away so easily. What do you mean, Kero? The frog girl tilts her head a little as she puts a finger to her mouth. The problem child meets his friend's eyes first, like he is taking forces of thanks to them. Then he looks at his fellow classmates, taking more time, judging if he should say what he wants to say to them. There's something in his expression showing he wants to talk. He wants it. He just wants to make sure that the people in the room are trustworthy. He notes Midoriya doesn't look in Bakugo's direction. Weird. And it's finally Shota's turn. The green eyes look at him and pause. A storm of emotions shine in his eyes. Fear, pain, regrets, doubts. But there's also hope and trust. It hurts, seeing this kind of thing in this problem child's eyes. It's wrong. Something is really wrong. Someone hurt this child so bad that he fears trusting adults. It breaks his heart. Why didn't he see it before? He should have done something. Shota's test is longer than the others, but apparently he passes because... Midoriya opens his mouth. I was quirkless. Nobody talks. They're all processing the three simple words. Shota's first thought is, There are still young quirkless people nowadays. The second is, You know how you were bullied before because of your weak quirk. This kid had to have had a worse bullying. His third is, I failed him. I should have seen it, but I didn't. I nearly expelled him. He was a late bloomer. I overlooked and I didn't help him like a teacher should. Never mind what he thinks, because the kid continues and the teacher realizes how much he screwed up. I was quirkless. I, I was a late bloomer, and it wasn't important to people that I was smart. They wrote me off as useless, quirkless Deku, who can't do a thing, who wants attention, who is weak. Uraraka looks like she's about to cry when she realizes the nickname was so bad. Ida has a shocked expression, and Todoroki looks like he wants to murder someone. When I was five, I corrected my teacher because, well, she was wrong— after the class, she told me that someone quirkless like me should not have talked back to older people, that they were right and I should listen to them. I didn't understand at the time. If she was wrong and teaching something wrong, then shouldn't I tell her, right? But before I was seven, I had learned several things. First, because I was quirkless. Teachers don't, or, well, didn't believe me. He looks at Shota with hope, and damn if it hurts because he's probably the first teacher to listen to him. Then, no matter what I said or did, it, I'd always be the one who was punished, if I corrected someone, if I tried to help, so I had to stay low and not bring attention to myself. The entirety of the class is perturbed by that. One day, when I was eight, a teacher put me at a zero because I had a perfect grade and I was quirkless. Surely, it was because I had cheated. It was not the only time, so I learned to fake. I fake mistakes because if I don't, then I have a zero. I fake my reaction because if I don't, I point out the mistakes of others or even how I could improve them. I fake because even if I know it's a lie, I take it as the truth. I tried to stop the muttering, but when I think in my head, I think too fast and it hurts my head. So muttering helps me, but most importantly, I learned that I should never, ever, ever say that I'm smart even with my IQ. There's a dark cloud that passes in his green eyes. Definitely a story here, but he can't press it. He hasn't earned the right to yet. Half of the class has tears in the corners of their eyes. So, I'm not the first in the class because I fake my own mistakes by habit. I didn't say anything because when I tried, Midoriya seems taken aback in his memory. His face is closed as ever. He never saw this kid with such a dark expression. It's so wrong. He shouldn't have this kind of face. So I don't say it. Not to adult teachers, anyway. 
I only say it here because it started with Nezu and Ashido, and I wasn't trying to brag or say that I'm smarter or to bring attention to me or... Shut up, Deku. Bakugo stops the beginning of the ranting. He's on edge. He seems angry. Is he angry at Midoriya for hiding his cap capabilities or at the teacher's? A sad smile appears on the green-haired team. I guess when you said I looked down on you, Kachan, it was a little true, because I hide and use my intelligence to be at everyone's level. I'm sorry, but I don't regret it. I tried, and it didn't end up well. Midoriya shivers at the end, like just thinking about it sickens him. The blonde boy explodes in his desk, ending the utterly silent room and the quiet crying. The bastards. I'll kill them. All this time I thought I was the best. It was all a lie because they sabotaged you. Bakugo, use your quirk in class again and you'll get a detention. Thank you for your trust, Midoriya. I'll make sure I'm worthy of it. The green eyes light up. It was the right thing to say. Deku-kun, Uraraka hugs him. I promise you can be yourself and we won't do any of the things that they did or say the things they said to you. You're our friend and we love you. Todoroki, Ida, and Asui come and hug the now crying kid. Present Mike enters the class at this moment. He's surprised and gives Shota a look. The homeroom teacher sighs. He will deny anyone who says that he is a soft spot for this class, but right now he doesn't really want to break the mood still. Ugh. Sorry to interrupt, but you have class now. We will continue this discussion after, Midoriya. Before going, he's making a subtle nod to Hazashi or present Mike, saying without words, I'll talk to you after. His problem child is surely something, and if he hides a proud smile on his capture weapon, well, nobody has to know. This concludes 197 IQ. I really like this one. I think there's not enough fix out there that really showcases Suku's potential intelligence, so I hope you guys liked it as well. And as always, thank you all so much for listening.